Good morning. Good morning. As we begin our first Sunday in Advent, I invite you to pray and let us begin this prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, may we rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read Psalm 25 verses 1 to 9 uh, responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord. I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let, let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let, let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and to the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lovely. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. 
and may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Lord. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that... <clears throat> excuse me, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you will have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man, the Gospel of the Lord. Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Signs are a funny thing, because there are certainly signs that we see and that have meaning and significance. And yet, what is the meaning and the significance that we get from these things? I have to tell you, a few weeks ago, uh, I'm a very early riser, and I was out in the morning, and I had the opportunity to see the lunar eclipse. It was a very incredible thing that the moon's could still see the, the, the whole moon, but yet it was, uh, the light was obscured except for a, a little edge, at least of what I saw. And it was this orangish red, maybe a little bit of brown or whatever. It was something very different, something very unique. Certainly we've all experienced weather that has been really unusual or crazy. There is no lack of political unrest anywhere. And so a lot of times people, they get that there's a lot of fear in this foreboding that they mention, because these are situations that we can't control. Yet there are also kinds of people who will read all kinds of things into these signs. They'll come up with a whole bunch of things. And not only will they, they come up with this themselves, they get others to believe in this stuff. And you may ask yourself, well, what does this all have to do with preparation for Christmas? And it is a wonderful gospel because the message that we need to hear is that, first of all, we need to look and we need to see what Christ has to say to us. And all too often, people will ring the bells and they will, you know, it's like the chicken littles, the sky is falling, it's, it's a horrible thing. I found it very interesting, though, that in that right after the foreboding stuff, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud cloud. Now today, a cloud 
aside from what's in the sky, has a whole different meaning, does it not? The cloud. Now, I'm the last person to talk to you about technology. I couldn't even tell you what the cloud means, but I think you put your stuff there and your stuff is safe. And then when you need your stuff, your computer takes it back and it's all wonderful. But you know what? There's fear and foreboding with that too. And I'm not talking about losing your stuff. Technology. Who would have ever thought or told me, you know, 30 over 30 years ago that I would be here today as a priest in front of a congregation and a laptop? I don't even think they had a laptop in those days. Maybe an abacus. Yeah. But think about it. This little machine does cause fear. And it does cause foreboding. Well, first of all, for me getting it right and making it work, there's a lot of fear and foreboding there. But aside from that, people, and it is two thirds of our attending congregation, attend through the media that we have. I don't know if there's a cloud involved or not, but just for sake of argument, it works with the scriptures. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it great that people who may not, for whatever reason, be able to physically be here can be one with us through these wonderful inventions? Now, that is certainly not what Christ meant or said in the Gospel of Luke. But it is an application these days that does cause, you know, what's going to happen to traditional worship and what's going to, you know, you know what Jesus says, what goes on out there that hold the signs and all the things that go on, you know what, God is coming and has come to us. And that's what Advent's about, God among us. He comes and how does it say he comes? He comes in power and he comes with great glory. So all that garbage that's going on out there and that stirs us up and that may lead to a whole bunch of different ways in which we may choose to understand that or hear that other people are perceiving it and whatever. Fear? No. Because what does he say after the great power? Does he say, fall to your knees and quake in fear? No. He says, stand up. Raise your head, not a position of fear, not a position that we are in con great concern for our welfare because of the power and the great glory of God. And that is what God comes to us to say, that faith replaces fear. Faith replaces fear. And that is what we are to in, hear the invitation for us to to really make this season about, the season of Advent. Don't get caught up in all the distractions. And I mean, we all hear this all the time, all the, the, the merchants, this and the selling and the buying of that, and you can't put this up yet and you can't. Yet. We get all kinds of caught up in all this garbage. And yeah, there are things that are going on that are very serious in our society. But the first place the place we must always be and the place that we reach our end that has to be in faith in God, because God is the one who will show us the way. Advent is a time where hopefully we, we take a little bit of time, if we can find the time, to find some quiet and to allow ourselves to be reoriented. That's a great word. I like that word. Reoriented to really kind of put our, our, if you ever have a GPS and you make a turn and it doesn't like, it's gonna tell you for like 10 minutes to go the other way. Mm -hmm. Well, God is telling us to reorient ourselves, but not in that obnoxious, you know, you make another turn, you went the wrong way. You know, it, it, raise your heads, listen and, and get the perspective that we need. Because what does he speak of? Your redemption, not condemnation, not damnation, not your horrible end, your redemption is here. And the first thing I think of, at least from my generation and the way I grew up is redemption. Do you remember maybe when we were children, I don't know if it, happened, it doesn't happen probably these days, but you could take those soda bottles and you could redeem them for money. 
and you could take them back. And if you were kind of like a, a kid that was really into this, you could go around and find all these bottles and you could, you could clean up, you know, can I get, take those bottles back for you? And that's really what it does. It speaks. And of course, there's no monetary issue with God's redemption, but it is a value. Your value is the issue. And again, all the stuff that goes on out there would really detract from and say that there is no value. But the message of Advent is as God comes to us and as we prepare for the birth of Jesus among us is to speak of the value. I love that hymn and the soul felt its worth. We come to know better who we are and our relationship with God here in Advent. You're familiar, I'm sure, with the Magi story and the following of the star. Again, another great heavenly omen of some sort. And of course, in scripture, it's one thing. But a lot of times we're distracted by bright and sparkly things. A lot of times it could be someone who's in the media a lot, you know, there's a movie star or a sports person or, or whomever, someone that gets a lot of airtime on television or, or whatever medium you use these days. And sometimes we get caught up in our own star because we think we're the star. And that distracts us. But basically what it is, when we think about the, 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 the signs that God gives us is to come home, to see the one light in our life, which is the, the, the love of God, that not only do we experience from God, but we get to share with each other. So the whole idea of love and forgiveness and, and redemption are all the things that, that really God is all about. And that's what this gospel is trying to tell us because he says, Jesus tells us there's going to be all this other stuff going on. And yeah, it's serious, but you need to have faith and you need to focus. And there is the, 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 if you will, the choice. We can swim in the mire and all that junk. Or we can soar with the Lord to rise above that. And that's part of redemption too, is it not? to be lifted up, not just ourselves, but to lift up others. You know something? You can't and I can't do anything about these fearful signs. I wasn't going to change the moon that day. We are not necessarily, I would imagine, as an individual in a position to change the geopolitical issues that go on in the world or even in our own country. But the fact is, God can. It's putting things in perspective. It's that reorientation, putting God first. To in faith pray for the situations that exist. To do what we can, certainly. But to know the fact that God, who is truly the one with power and great glory, is the one where we must place our trust, our hope, and our faith. Hear the call to come out of the misery. And understand that that's what God has it for us. Could you do imagine this, this sermon could have gone one of two ways, really? I could, you know, you really wind things up and talk about fearful omens. And when I saw that moon, I just knew that God was going to say to us that we have to do this. And that would be my word and my attitude and my sin. Because then we look back at the word of God and God speaks of redemption. He does not speak conversely. It's the opposite. And how does this gospel end? It's a wonderful line. Praying that you'll have the strength. Now, again, that you could say, you better pray you have the strength. But how about saying in faith, we pray and God gives us the strength, which is the promise of God. And not that twisted use of signs and words that so often happens in our faith. It is a joyful message and not a fearful one. It is a message of love. It is a message of empowerment. It is the message that we prepare for on this first Sunday as we have the first candle lit to prepare and renew ourselves for the birth of Christ. Now, Christ has been born. He lived, he died, he rose, and he ascended, but God is still with us. And that is what we need to renew in our hearts in our prayer life and in our faith life, and understand, again, the value of the redemption, not only in our own lives, but that of all of our sisters 
and all of our brothers. Let us pray we will hear and give time to God so that we may listen to the message of joy, the message of hope, and the message of love that is what Advent is all about. May God be blessed. I invite you at this time, let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the only God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the Father, who in all things were made. Person for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he went into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and its kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who sees the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son is worshiped in glory. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God provides us with loving assurance that we shouldn't fear Christ's return to earth. We pray for the church that it will avoid worldly entrapments and concentrate on preaching the good news. Almighty God, hear our prayer. We pray for the world that it will joyfully meet the needs of humanity. May its leaders respond to hunger, poverty, and climate change, and may they stop persecution. Almighty God, Prayer. Bless the newly elected leaders of our country to practice humility and honesty. May they serve the interests of all your people. Almighty God, Prayer. Jesus, stir up your power to activate our faith and stay close to your commands of loving the Lord and our neighbor. To this end, may we reach out to those who have not and provide them with food, employment, and housing. Almighty God, hear our prayer. by your mercy, keep us safe from the threatening dangers of our sins. Redeem us to practice Christ's life of justice. May we pray for your presence during this holy season of Advent. Almighty God, we pray for healing and peace for the community in Wisconsin. May they have faith to sustain them through these difficult times in their lives. Almighty God, we also remember all those who are suffering from COVID. As I read this week, uh, the Bishop of the Diocese of Allentown, the Catholic Diocese is suffering from COVID for him and for all people who have uh, caught COVID. Almighty God, we also remember George who passed away for his soul and for the consolation and for the support and uh, the welfare of his family. Almighty God, Lord, keep us in your love, preserve our community, and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
and thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved others as ourselves. <clears throat> we are truly sorry. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let us together with our sisters and brothers who are not receiving communion physically, but are just as much the body of Christ and share in the presence of Jesus as we, let us pray the prayer of St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you to my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them to remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray together our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As far as announcements, just a reminder that this Saturday we will have a day of prayer. And I invite you that to take the opportunity, if you have the time, to please come and, and join in a time of fellowship and prayer. But I ask that if you are intending to come, you just please call so the adequate preparations can be made. Also, starting this Wednesday, as I announced last week, I will be posting our Advent Reflections on YouTube and on Facebook. And I invite you to, uh, if you have the opportunity and they're there, so at your convenience to, to share some Advent Reflections. This week we'll be reflecting on the Advent gift and blessing of hope. Any other announcements, please? The Advent Giving Tree is all ready, and the, there are gift suggestion cards on the tree for our friends at the Masa Nursing Home. If you choose to take one by a gift for one of the residents, there are three suggestions on each card. You'll only need to take care of one, so that's at your discretion. Uh, and the gifts must be left with the card on top and return here by Sunday, December the 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Next Sunday.
Sunday, not tomorrow, but the following Sunday, is our potluck luncheon to celebrate our monthly gathering. Um, so if you sign up on the sheet or let me know if you'd like to attend or what you might like to bring, um, please do so. Thanks. All are welcome. Any other announcements? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.